Hey everybody, my name is Karen Ketchy and I'm a registered nurse. I wanted to talk today about the important topic of controlling bleeding. In today's atmosphere, you and your family can be out enjoying some time in the wilderness or unfortunately, you could be at a concert at a major venue and an incident happens and now it's up to you to control somebody's bleeding. So let's talk about that. First, the important thing to consider is remain calm. When you're in those situations that are high intensity, a lot of yelling, a lot of excitement, it's easy to get distressed and not know what the next step is. So first thing and foremost, take a breath. Take a breath and focus. The second is before you go and attempt to render aid to somebody, you need to make sure that you're safe and those around you are safe or you will just contribute to the difficult problem at hand. After you're sure that the scene is safe and that you're safe, you wanna check for responsiveness. That just simply means making sure that they're alert, they're responsive, they're breathing, and they have a pulse. If they have these things, then you can then proceed to trying to identify what's the source of bleeding. If you find that they do not have a pulse or they're not breathing, you are to begin the CPR process. You'll find a link below that will take you to that next step. Once you determine that bleeding is the issue, you need to activate the 911 process. That's alert. Dial 911 before you do anything, or stay with the patient and direct somebody else to immediately. You go dial 911, and that way you can begin the bleeding control process. Having your own stop the bleed or a first aid or a bleeding compression kit is important, but if you don't have those tools, we're gonna help you identify things that you may have around you that you can use in the meantime. There are several options to control bleeding. You can do pressure, you can stuff the wound, pack it if you will, or you can do a tourniquet. And we're going to look at all three examples. One of the first thing we wanna do with the wound is to assess it. With this wound, we can see that there's bleeding. And with bleeding, we wanna determine is it active bleeding and if so, we need to stop it. One of the ways that you stop bleeding is by direct compression. So I'm gonna have Eunice put her arm flat on the table. And so the patient, you wanna tell them, I'm gonna hold direct pressure on this, and it's gonna be a lot of pressure, so it's gonna hurt. So just don't be surprised that that's what we have to do. Okay. So how you're gonna hold direct pressure is with the heel of your hand, directly over the wound, two hands, lean over it, and you're gonna put all your weight on it. And you're gonna do this until EMS arrives. After holding direct pressure, if you find that the bleeding is still coming through, we're going to transition to adding gauze and a pressure dressing. This is an example of the tools that we're gonna use for gauze to hold directly over the wound, and then a pressure dressing. When you add the dressing, you're still gonna to want to apply pressure as much as you can while at the same time applying the gauze. So we're still holding pressure here, and if you have somebody to help you in this scenario, fantastic, you hold the pressure, they wrap the gauze. All right, can I get you to hold direct pressure on this? Yes. We're gonna get them to start the lowest, and we're gonna make it as tight as we can. And if this wound, while you're doing this, and you've wrapped and wrapped, and you're still holding direct pressure, if you still have active bleeding after this, you wanna to transition to a tourniquet. In most first aid kits, you're gonna find a triangular bandage, gauze, and a tourniquet. We've already demonstrated using gauze uh, to wrap the wound and hold compression. If that is not working, your next step should be a tourniquet. What you wanna do is put it two to three inches above the wound, but not on a joint, as identified here. Insert one end and keep pulling until it gets tight and tight until the bleeding stops. Again, this is gonna hurt, it's gonna hurt a lot, and we're not taking this off until EMS arrives. And if you need to, you're still gonna hold compression.
let's say you don't have your first aid kit handy or you're out in an area, there are no first aid kits available. Use the resources that you have. Find something available. In this case, we're gonna pull a triangular bandage and we're gonna use it as a tourniquet. Using the same principle as applying it above the wound, because remember trying to stop the bleeding and we're going to make it tight. Tight, okay. And we're gonna make it tight around the arm then we're going to take the pen and that's going to be our torque. So in doing that, we're going to tie that into place. And then you're going to use this to be your tourniquet agent. You keep twisting it and then you're going to tie this in place. And again, marking the time on the dressing, what time the tourniquet was placed. You know, it's gonna be painful, but it's gonna be better painful, but to save a life. We just reviewed how to use resources around you, such as the example as the triangular tourniquet. This, however, is a commercial grade one, and I wanted to take a moment just to show you how to apply it properly. It comes in, an, it's nice and tight. You wanna open it up and it comes ready to use. You're gonna put it, again, two to three inches above the wound. You're gonna tighten it down as tight as it can be tolerated. Stop it three quarters away around. You're gonna take the torquing agent, the stick here, if you will, and you're gonna keep going tight. You're gonna keep going until you can't tighten it anymore or the bleeding has stopped. Then you're gonna let it sit in its little housing unit. You're gonna bring the excess over and you're gonna tie it, the top back over. And you're gonna write on here the time that the tourniquet was applied. We first looked at compression, direct compression with your weight over the wound to stop the bleed. The second we looked at applying a compressive bandage. So we put some gauze on top of it and we've wrapped it with some uh, dressing to hold it in place and we still put weight and compression on it. If that doesn't work, we also took a look at the process of a tourniquet. We looked at what was available around us for resources and then we looked at a professional grade one. Uh, now we're going to take a look at the wound that is maybe on a joint or it's somewhere in the body that you're, you cannot apply a tourniquet. We're going to pack the wound for the purpose of uh, putting a bunch of gauze inside it to absorb the blood. And if you use a homeostatic dressing, and here's an example of one, a homeostatic agent will pull all the liquid out of the blood, forming a congealed clot, helping to stop the bleeding. If you don't have this in your home or wherever you're at, just use gauze, or if you need to, a t-shirt, uh, anything that you can get your hands on as you stuff that wound. Okay, Eunice, I know this is gonna be painful, but what we need to do is we need to stuff this gauze in this wound. And I'm gonna do it with my whole hand, and I'm gonna shove it down there as far as I can until I cannot put any more gauze there. It's gonna hurt, but it's gonna help save your life. You wanna make sure that you are fully planting that gauze in every crevice. And if it's, how about pumping that and see if that helps. You can put a dressing over this to hold this in place, but still, this is just an initial action to take place until EMS arrive. I'm gonna stand here and hold pressure on this until they get here.